guys, it's Alice and today I'm going to talk about the books I read in January. First up we have got The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This is a mystery thriller and it's set in a crumbling mansion called Blackheath where Evelyn Hardcastle is going to be murdered at a ball in the evening and she will continue to be murdered again and again until a man named Aidan Bishop can figure out who the murderer is. Doomed to live the same day over and over, the only way out is to solve the mystery. But nothing and no one at Blackheath are exactly what they say they are. This was such a thrilling and exciting book and so different from anything that I've read in a really long time. I had some people tell me before I started this that I was going to have to concentrate a little bit while I was reading this and they were right. The plot is incredibly complicated and I wouldn't blame anyone if they got a little bit confused along the way, as I did, but I found that the further into the book I got, the more manageable it was and I kind of feel like it's meant to be that way. There are a lot of characters in here and even though they are incredibly interesting, there are a lot of them so it takes a little bit of brain power to sort of sort them out. It is the kind of book that you need to pay close attention to because there is never a moment of peace and any sentence could hold a valuable clue. In some books I feel like that can be a little bit draining but in this it was just so much fun and I just wanted to keep reading and try to figure it all out. It just sucked me right in and I love the setting and the dark atmosphere and there are parts in here where you learn something really shocking about this sort of thing that's going on that's really really creepy but you just have to keep reading. It's not a book without faults though, like I feel like the ending was maybe a little bit too much. I think it's a little bit long and maybe slightly overly complicated, but for a debut novel this is pretty extraordinary. It is the kind of book that's going to be confusing if you're not vigilant, but I feel like it's worth making the effort to get lost in. And I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The second book I read was Becoming by Michelle Obama. This is a memoir and in it Michelle Obama chronicles her life from her childhood up until the 8 years she spent as the first lady of the United States. And she's the first African American woman to ever serve in that role. Okay, so I need you guys to hear me out on this one. This book has an insanely high rating on Goodreads and I literally haven't seen one remotely bad review of this and because of that I had such incredibly high expectations. Like I can't remember the last time I had such high expectations for a book and I was ready to be completely blown away and I honestly just wasn't. I really enjoyed this but clearly not as much as everyone else. Now I've been a fan of Michelle Obama ever since I first saw an interview with her and I think she's amazing. She's hardworking, unapologetically intelligent and seems really kind. I think she's such an inspiration especially to women and I think the work that she's done is so important. Reading about her early years was very interesting, like I really enjoyed that part, but the further into the book I got the less interested I felt and I feel like maybe that's because I'm not always that interested in reading about family life and marriage, even if it is in the White House. The way Michelle writes is really good, like I was really impressed with the writing style. It's straightforward and honest and she's really detail oriented, which I really like. I think I just expected this to be a little bit different, like I thought it was going to be more about her thoughts and opinions on certain issues but instead it's just sort of the journey of her life and I think I just expected it to dig a little bit deeper. I know I'm in the minority here but I just... I don't know. If I was going to rate Michelle Obama herself she would get an infinite amount of stars but because this is not Michelle Obama, this is a book, I have given it a 3 out of 5 stars which means that I read and enjoyed it, which I did. I really hope she writes more books because I think her writing style is really good and I'd love to know more about her thoughts on everything she doesn't talk about in this book. Next I picked up Force of Nature by Jane Harper. This is another mystery thriller and it's the second book in the Aaron Falk series, although you don't really need to read these in order. 
and this one is about five women who go on a corporate retreat into the Australian bush and only four women come back out. I thought this was really exciting and although I enjoyed The Dry, which is the first book in this series, I think I actually prefer this one. My absolute favorite thing about Harper's books is the way that she is so good at creating atmosphere. The forest in this is both magnificent and creepy and you can almost feel the cold and the rain and the claustrophobic darkness of the bush. I really like the characters in this one, I think they're better than in the first book, but I do think some of them could have used a little more work because it took me a while to figure out who was who of the five women in the forest. The suspense is what gets you though. The story switches between present time told through Fox eyes and the days spent in the forest told through the eyes of all the different women, and I feel like that worked really well. The ambience is just fantastic and you just want to keep reading. Overall I thought this was a fantastic mystery thriller filled with all the right things. Interesting people, attention, atmosphere, and surprise. And I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read Exit West by Mohsin Hamid. This is contemporary fiction and it's set in a country where war is about to break out. And these two people meet and just as their relationship is about to take form, the violence in their hometown escalates and they decide to try and escape through these mysterious doors that they've heard whispers about. Doors that can whisk you far away. This is a wonderful little book and it has a quietness to it that I really like. The writing is beautiful and it manages to conjure up cities and people without an excess of words. And it is short, but very moving. The two main characters in this are really interesting, and I loved coming on this journey with them and seeing them grow. There's also an obvious commentary on our current world in this, which I really appreciate. It discusses war and immigration, as well as love, family, and courage. I really like that the writer doesn't overdo it with this. It's subtle, but really powerful. My only complaint about this is that I think it starts off a lot stronger than it finishes, and there are some things left unexplained in this. It feels very truthful though, and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. And I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars, but I think maybe on reflection it's more of a 4 star book. Second to last, I read Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This is a poetry collection, and in it we meet two young boys who have lost their mother, a father who has lost his wife, and the crow that has attached itself to the grieving family. This was a really interesting collection, and there are some things that I absolutely love about this, and some that I don't. I really like the theme of this book, and you can really feel the grief of this family. The story is sort of told through the eyes of the boys, the father, and the crow, and I really like the image of this big black bird suddenly being a part of the family. But I really struggled with his parts or his poems, like they literally made no sense to me, which is maybe the point, I don't know. The other ones were magnificent though. I have a feeling that maybe I would have gotten more out of this if I had read Ted Hughes' The Crow, because it's very heavily referenced in this, but I also kind of feel like I shouldn't have to. I still really enjoyed it though, and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Lastly, I finished Season of Migration to the North by Tayeb Sali, and this is translated from Arabic by Dennis Johnson Davies. This is a modern classic, and it's about a man who returns to his village in Sudan after having studied abroad, and becomes a friend with a new face in the village, a man who has quite a troubling past. To be completely honest, I don't have a lot to say about this. I was quite excited to read it, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. The writing in this is beautiful, and it did start off fairly well with the first 30 or so pages, but after that I was just completely uninterested in the story and the characters, and I honestly felt like it was kind of boring. I feel like this is one of those books that's amazing if you study it in school, because I know that it's a commentary on colonization and the history of Sudan, and I'm sure that this is fantastic if you understand all of that. But for me, as just an average reader, I didn't really feel like I got a whole lot from this, so I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. Now, I'm also currently reading A Keeper by Graham Norton, which is a mystery novel, and I'm only about 50 or so pages in, but I'm really enjoying it, and it was the perfect book to pick up right now, like it was exactly 
what I wanted to read. Okay guys, those are all the books that I had to talk about today. I'd love to know what you guys all read in January and I will see you soon.